tonight on Access TV. Live live with Gotham Comedy live. Get ready to laugh. My wife, Bonnie McFarlane. You don't have to see my wife, Papua. With Harrison Greenbaum, Joe Matteris, John Moses, Mike Yard, and your hosts, Rich Voss and Bonnie McFarlane. Listen, they were banging me, they weren't that quiet. He's taken, ladies. From the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Rich Voss and Bonnie McFarlane. Welcome to Gotham Comedy Live, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I am your host, Bonnie McFarlane. This is my husband, Rich Voss. Don't call me your husband, you fucking cock block. <laughs> There's so many hot girls. I thought you were going to get mad that I mispronounced your name. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> I, uh, Rich, obviously, you know who he is. He's a big, big, big comedian. Um, I am yeah. also a comedian. <laughs> and uh, we're married, uh, obviously, and... Um, for now. For now. <laughs> we don't normally, we're not a duo. We don't normally do, I guess because it's Valentine's Day, they yeah. thought we should, you know, they th I guess they thought we were in love. This yeah. is going to be like some, <laughs> some good mo thing. The they don't realize that... How long have we been married? Uh, this is our seventh and final year. Uh, <laughs> first of all, the, the most romantic thing that happened today is we didn't hit each other. Uh, <laughs> we've been married seven, year, seven years, and, and she will not let me do 69. I feel like it's, it's like a working vacation, you know? <laughs> Not, no, I'm against it. <laughs> so, tell them why we're not a comedy team. So we're not a comedy team, uh, you know, you'll, you can tell by our timing. Um, uh. <laughs> we, we, because a great comedy team uh, needs a straight man, and we don't have one. <laughs> He's a fag, I'm a faggot. Uh, I do call you a fag a lot. I call you a fag all the time. And I don't mean it in that kind of like cool guy sleeping with guy way. I mean it in the pejorative sense. First of all, pejorative, nobody knows what the fuck that means, okay? Gay guys do. No, I don't. I mean, no, they don't. Here's the thing, here's the thing about being gay. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, no, not I me. Guess I not guess me. he's coming out. No, I mean, uh, it, it, it's tough enough nowadays with all, you know, the, the hostility towards gay and being a gay couple, but, but what's really tough is being an interracial gay couple. That's a tough call home. Dad, I, I'm gay. Now sit down. <laughs> I feel like you should say that must be a tough call home because it really sounds like, are you in a gay interracial relationship right now? No. It feels like you're speaking from <laughs> no, experience. No, no. First of all, gay people uh, love Valentine's Day. I don't know if that's true. Um, <laughs> but I, if they do, I've, I think I could start like a Valentine's Day like greeting card kind of thing. And I wrote, I wrote a couple of greeting cards for gay for gay guys. Uh, number one, for Valentine's Day. You might be a bottom, but to me, you're the tops. <laughs> be mine. There's another one. Heaven's probably overrated. Get over here. <laughs> they gotta live in the moment, you know, because they're not going upstairs. I like that one. I think. Were you in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Here's my third. Holy Number God. three. Happy Valentine's Day. You are the love of my life. Whenever we're together, I dread going home to my wife. <laughs> How many times have I said that? <laughs> uh, here's, 
Here's what great guy. Here's what gay guys. Great guys. Do you see what's happening? I fucked up one joke. Big no. deal. First of all, calm you down. You fucked I'm... up my life. <laughs> <laughs> I offered her twenty-five thousand to leave. I said, "Here's twenty-five thousand. Get the fuck out." And she said, "No." So here's your tip: never make your final offer first. Okay? <laughs> I should have said, "Here's fifteen dollars. Get the fuck out." Anyhow, here's what, here's what gay guys and straight guys have in common. It all breaks down to in life is how can I get my dick sucked? Okay. How can I get my dick sucked? Thank you, sir. An honest man. How, all right, guys. Step guys, one, don't get married. Okay. <laughs> well, guys have important things in life. You have family, health, career. But how can I get my dick sucked? Squash is everything, okay? <laughs> a guy, a guy, a straight guy will get his dick sucked by a girl with one eye, <laughs> then tell his friends that bitch was focused, okay? <laughs> Just, okay. okay? So, so I'm telling you. How? That's, you, you wake up every day, every day. How can I get my dick sucked? You go through high school, oh, I get my dick sucked. That doesn't happen. You go to college, now there's eight years down the drain, okay? <laughs> you get married, you listen to this for 24 hours a day, say, nye, 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 nye. when is this bitch ever gonna suck my dick? You know what I mean? <laughs> you're, you're sound asleep and she wakes you and says, go turn the heat up. Or what you wanna say is, why don't you go fuck yourself? But you're thinking, maybe tomorrow she'll suck my dick, right? <laughs> so you run down, turn the heat up, come upstairs and thank her. You know, I was sleeping cold, okay? So, so listen to me. This is a straight guy will go through a song and dance to get his dick sucked. And this is all a gay guy has to do to get his dick sucked. All he has to do is go to a rest area, see another gay guy, and go like this. <laughs> Am I right? deflected with that guy. Am I right? Well, uh, if he's not gay, look at him. He's with a beautiful woman. Um, he's taken, ladies. Uh, well, I, I, I was thinking, you know, about a Valentine's Day that I had before I was with you. Um, it was not, believe it or not, it was worse than the Valentine's Day I have with you. Um, two weeks before Valentine's Day on this particular, uh, t with this guy that I was dating, um, my cat had to be put to sleep. That's not the funny part. Um, my cat, no, it was, it's really, it's super sad. My cat had a neurological disorder and I had to have my cat put to sleep. And, you know, it was very, very sad. And two weeks later on Valentine's Day, I said to my boyfriend, I said, why didn't you give me a present? He said, I had your cat put to sleep. <laughs> that, was what my, that was my gift. Well, I, I, was, I was like, what are you gonna get me for Christmas? My leg amputated? <laughs> and, and you still stayed with him for like another year, right? After that? Mm. You stayed with him. Here's the deal, you know why she stayed with Here's the deal why you stay with him. Listen to me, guys. You think, hey, you look at that girl and you think, wait, she's too hot for me, she's gonna leave me, all right? She is. Your girl is not gonna leave. I don't give a fuck if she's a supermodel. Listen to me. Listen to me, guy. Your girl's not gonna leave you. All you have to do is find her weakness, her insecurity, and you swoop in and take advantage of it. Listen, listen to me. Say you're with a girl and she thinks her hand is just a little too big. You have to make her believe, bitch, you got the biggest hand on the planet, okay? You're lucky I'm fucking you with that big ass frying pan hand. Nobody else is gonna fuck you with that hand, but I love you for who you are. Although you did deceive me when I first met you and you waved with your good hand. Then you got out of the car and I thought you were dragging a raft. My wife is perfect, I'm not gonna lie. She's, I love this girl to death. She is perfect. Now, I know 
something's coming. Although, I know. although she does have a flat ass. Uh, <laughs> when I fuck her from behind, I feel like I'm fucking Jackie Chan's face. Uh, <laughs> You can remember back that far. What's that? <laughs> Keep getting wise and I won't clean off your back tonight. <laughs> that little bit'll just evaporate. <laughs> Why am I so dirty? I'm not You're not dirty. I'm being dirty because I'm trying you're super dirty and then I feel like I uh, like in my real life I'm not dirty at all. I'm actually kind of a prude. I didn't even get tea bagged till I was in college. That's a true story. It's embarrassing. I was a late bloomer. <laughs> Can we switch? I'll trade right now. I'll trade for that hot Asian I will girl. trade too, yeah. <laughs> you, get her, you get her to walk around in a robe throwing firecrackers like boogie nights? Uh, uh, that pussy's got to taste sweet and sour, huh? He makes jokes, he makes jokes, but he really is racist. Uh, so that's refreshing. <laughs> Listen, everybody, stay tuned. We're going to come right back with lots of amazing, amazing comics uh, right here on Gotham Comedy Live. Stick with us. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Harrison Greenbaum is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live. Uh, our first comedian uh, was on Comedy Central's Comics to Watch. He's also the recipient of the Andy Kaufman Award. Please welcome the very, very hilarious Harrison Greenbaum. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, oh, so happy to be here. This is great, I love it, I love, I love being on stage. I did a lot of musical theater when I was in high school and college, so my nickname was Faggot. It was good times, it was good times. You're still laughing, you're perpetuating a hate crime. People think I'm gay. All right, good reaction. Uh, <laughs> it's weird, right? Because once people think you're gay, there's no proving that you're straight, right? Like, you know what I'm talking about, V-neck blazer, right? Like, <laughs> right? Like, if you walk in on me and I was just making out with a dude, right? Don't get excited. But if I was just making out with a dude, you'd walk in and be like, he is definitely gay, and that's reasonable. But you walk in on me, I'm making out of a woman, you'd be like, he's fooling himself. And that's... <laughs> Not that it doesn't have its advantages, though, you know what I mean? Like, nobody asked me to donate blood, so that's good. <laughs> HIV joke, high five everybody, we did it, we did it. Actually, V is the Roman numeral four five, so HIV is a high five if you pronounce it correctly. <laughs> It's an ancient languages joke, everybody. This comedy train is going express. <laughs> Let's all get on board. I don't know, I decided I was gonna be a comedian. It was senior year of college. That was very difficult. Senior year of college, and I had to tell my parents who paid for college. <laughs> I sat them down, I was like, Mom, Dad, I have something very important to tell you. And they were like, you're gay? <laughs> And I was like, no, 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 I, 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 I want to be a comedian. And they were like, we'd rather you be gay. <laughs> Is that still an option on the table? Just be like a gay lawyer or something. We will go to the parade. <laughs> and I'm a New Yorker. Got New Yorkers in the house? Yeah! Yeah. I actually got into an argument on the subway and the guy quoted the Bible at me. That is not fair. If you get to quote from your favorite book, I should be able to quote from my favorite book, right? 
He was like, men do not live on bread alone. Matthews, 4-4. Four, four. And I was like, everybody's living magic. Harry Potter, chapter seven. <laughs> it's not a fair fight, right? Because one of those books is a classic about a man who has sacrificed himself for the good of the world. And the other is the Bible. Do you know what I'm saying, people? <laughs> I'm glad you guys are laughing. You know that joke the other night? This woman was like, the Bible is true. It's like, really? It doesn't have a bibliography. <laughs> real books have references. So make some real books. Actually, the word Bible and bibliography have the same Latin root. Did you know that? The word Bible is from Biblia. Do you know what the word Bible means in English? It means book. That's some cocky shit. God's just writing stuff down. He's just like, what are you going to call that book? He's like, book? Jesus Christ, that's the sequel. It's an arrogant maneuver, right? Can you imagine you're working on a movie? You're like, what are you gonna call that movie? You're like, movie? What are you gonna call a sequel, movie two? No, new movie. Bible's a weird book, right? Like my friend reads it religiously, which is really the only way to read it. And He's always quoting from it, you know? He's always like, God doesn't want you to masturbate. Like, really? Because last time I checked, he gave me two hands, a joystick, and a game I always win. <laughs> what kind of evil genius installs a Sega Genesis in your basement and then is like, only two player games? What if you want to play Tetris one night? I like that joke because I did it in Georgia. I got very upset. He came up to me after the show and said, I don't like that Bible joke. I said, sir, what problems do you have? And he said, you know you can't play Tetris on a Sega Genesis. <laughs> touché, touché. It's, ama it's amazing we even believe in God after all this shit our parents put us through when we're kids, right? Like you're five or six years old, you go up to your dad, you're like, hey dad, are you Santa? He's like, yeah, it's me. It's me. <laughs> like, if you're not like also the Easter Bunny, no, no, it's also me. <laughs> but you're not like also, also the Tooth Fairy. He's like, are you retarded? <laughs> it's always me. <laughs> we wear the costumes, imaginary characters, just to teach you lessons. Then you're like, oh, are, are you God? No, no, that one's real. <laughs> That's the real one? That's the one you want me to believe in? That's the only one of those four that doesn't leave direct evidence of his existence on a yearly basis. <laughs> Santa's leaving you presents, the Easter Bunny's hiding eggs, the Tooth Fairy's leaving you money. What does God do for you when you're five or six years old? He takes away grandpa, that's all he does. <laughs> what I'm saying is your, da your dad killed your grandpa, that's what I'm saying. God's a dick. I, I like being in New York. I live in an apartment building, which is weird. It's not natural, right? It's just people stacked up on top of people like they're Legos or something. Like, I've never met my next door neighbor, but I know she moans really loudly when she has sex. <laughs> I finally met her in the elevator like two weeks ago. I was like, hey, how was your weekend? She's like, it was okay. I was like, it was more than okay. <laughs> you came seven times. <laughs> you had an incredible weekend. I don't know. I was vegan for a while. Anybody else here sad and hungry all the time? Anybody else? <laughs> I was vegan. You know vegan, right? It's when you give up meat and dairy and friendship. Those are the three things. <laughs> I was vegan because I don't want to be, I don't want to be fat, you know? Like, I, 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 I don't want to think I'm against fat people. You know what I mean? I mean, they're gross, but like, I'm not <laughs> against. It's fine if you're fat, but just don't complain about problems that are clearly due to your fatness. <laughs> Right, I have this fat cousin, she's like 700 pounds overweight. She is always complaining, right? She's always like, oh, I have such bad knees. <laughs> really, you're gonna blame your knees? Your knees are doing an admirable job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your knees are killing it. I like, you don't understand, I blew out my knee again. I was like, yeah, I'm sure whales used to have hundreds and hundreds of knees and they kept blowing them out. And God was like, go in the ocean. 
you're ruining all of it. This experiment is over. All right, well, this is over too. You guys have been great. Thanks so much, everybody. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Joe Matarese is taking the stage when we return. having a good time? Are you ready for our next act? Uh, he's a great friend of mine. You're really going to love him. He's a regular on Chelsea lately. A big hand for Joe Matarese, folks. Rich Voss, everybody. Why not? Why not? How are you? How are you? This is live and shit. This is cool, huh? You guys are drunk. I'm just little buzz. I'm good. I'm good. I'm like old guy buzz, though, man. You guys all look young. This is fucking depressing. Anyone over 40? Yeah, that's my section right there. Look at this dude. He looks like it's happy. It's cold out. You're one of those dudes, right? You're like, what are you, like 20? 22? 31, you look unbelievable, dude. You should, be, you should be a male model, seriously. I am old as shit, dude. You look like you're like, I want to put my gloves on. It's so chilly. Yay, you know? <laughs> Fucking old, man. This is when you know you're old. When you go to an empty bar and you go, I love this place. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming here every week. This is my spot. I'm fucking, I'm 45, man. This is the beginning of old. It really is. Here's a, I do old guy things now. Like, I currently play in an over 40 men's softball league. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Nine out of 12 guys on our team have injuries. <laughs> but none of them are from the game. <laughs> Can you imagine how pathetic it would sound if they tried to broadcast it on television? Like, Jim, I don't know if you heard, Joe Matarese, the left center fielder, is going to be out for about six weeks. He, uh, he blew out his ACL stepping over a baby gate at two in the morning. <laughs> Pete Shromsky, the first baseman, is going to be out for a long time. I think about 11 weeks. He, uh, he tore his ACL trying to put a pottery barn desk up into his third-story <laughs> attic. Man, I don't know if this group's gonna make it through that long eight-game season. I don't know. <laughs> I blame, I blame being a dad, man. I got two kids. You guys like, third. You don't look like you have kids, man. You have that no kids like smile too, man. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to the 40-year-old people over here again. Yeah, yeah. I have two kids, man. Two kids kicks the living shit out of you. Write this down. One kid is the way to go. I'm telling you. Right? Right, old people? One. One kid. One kid, all you need to do is drink a couple of beers at dinner. And you're like, <laughs> where's he going? <laughs> oh, shit, he just broke that thing I loved. <laughs> Two kids, you need medication. You really do. And that isn't even a joke. You need Medication. I'm telling I've been on antidepressants for about a year now. It's the best shit I've ever done in my life. I'm telling you. It makes every show seem like it's going incredibly well. It really does. Like, th this is how good my medication is. It feels like Access TV is my big break. <laughs> uh, I can't cut that shit out. All right. <laughs> I 
Oh, that really, that made me laugh for real. That wasn't even my, my one buzz giggle. Yeah, I'm telling you, I, my doctor prescribes Celexa. I don't know what you guys take, but my doctor said, Joe, 20 milligrams of Celexa, that's what you need, right? But I'm kind of cheap, so I made him up the milligrams. I said, give me 40 so I can break them in half, right? This is what you do when you're cheap. You make one copay, and then you get two months of medication. Yeah, but this is how dumb I am. I didn't know you could go to a pharmacy and buy a pill cutter to make nice, precise cuts. No, I've been in my kitchen trying to bake, break my pills with my thumbs. You know? So one day I'm on an eight milligram, the next day I'm on a 32. Got ones and twos rolling around on the kitchen floor. My oldest kid's five, he's picking those up, you know? He's like, I don't need any more toys, Daddy. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and it scares me because I'm seeing a little bit of me and my son, but not my good qualities, just my shitty, anxious qualities. The other day, like, I, I, this is what's annoying about having a five-year-old, once again, to the 40s. Uh, they don't know how to wipe their butts for a while, right? They have pooping and peeing down all the way up to the wiping the ass part. So my son will just have his pants at his ankles and he's just got his ass in the air. And he's just like, Dad, Daddy, Dad, Daddy. And I come in, I'm, I'm Joe the wiper, okay? And then he's like, weird, he's like, how many wipes, Daddy, how many wipes? He wants to know how many. I'm like, I don't know, till your ass is clean, okay? I'm not some shitty dad that's like, one wipe, yeah, you're good, you're good. You know? But I'm not some OCD dad that's just like wiping. It's like, dad, I smell fire, it's fine, it's fine. You gotta clean it. So, this is a true story. About a week ago, my son's standing in front of the toilet. This is when I saw me in my son. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I don't want to go to the bathroom, Daddy. Why? I'm afraid something might come out of the water and get me. I pulled him aside. I'm like, you trust me. I'm your dad, right? He's like, yes, Daddy, I trust you. I go, never in the history of the toilet has anything ever came out of the water to get somebody. Never. He waits about five seconds. He looks at me and goes, but what if it happens to me? <laughs> kid, right? I go, it's not gonna happen to you because it's impossible. He waits another five seconds and he goes, how's it impossible? There's a hole in the bottom of the toilet. <laughs> Cut to now I'm afraid to take a shit too. My wife's like, you guys gotta go. I'm like, I'm not doing it, man. There's a hole down there and you don't know what's coming out. And my dad has anxiety too. It's like it's gone through the whole family, right? But my dad never told me about his anxiety because my dad's 70. Old people didn't grow up in the time of letting their kids know about their, their quirks and dysfunctions, right? That's bullshit. That's not the way to raise kids. Like I said, I have a five-year-old and I have an 11-month-old daughter, okay? I let them both know every day. I do. In the morning, right, before school, I'm like, listen, your dad's got mental problems. There's a good chance you might have some mental problems. Right? I'll be driving my five-year-old to kindergarten. And I'm like, hey, just wanted to let you know you might feel the walls closing in at some point today. This is when I found out my dad had anxiety too. We took a cruise together, which I don't recommend. Don't do that. We take a cruise together and uh, my dad, we pulled away from Fort Lauderdale. He's looking out the porthole and he's just going. <sighs> I'm like, what's going on, dad? He's like, I don't know. I think I'm having one of my anxiety attacks. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I've had an anxiety problem most of my life. I'm like, oh, thanks for telling me now. I thought it was a freak of nature for 40 years. I go, Dad, why would you not tell me about your anxiety problem? This is what he says. He goes, I thought it might have skipped a generation. 
I go, this isn't fucking Teen Wolf. <laughs> I'm Joe Matteris. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. John Moses is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. great performers still to come. Your next act is John Moses. He's uh, gonna be seen next here. <laughs> Please welcome John Moses! Keep it going for Bonnie McFarland, everybody. Isn't she a peach? I wouldn't mind taking a run at her if her and Rich Voss get divorced, right? All right, I'm a little sick. I'm, uh, I'm a little sick, guys. I was standing on a subway platform and a Chinese guy was standing this close to my face and coughed the superflu into my throat and eyes, so. It's one of the charms of New York. And he just gives me that glazed over, I don't speak English look. Yeah, I bet you were speaking English when they were packing out the garden for Jeremy Lin, right? This is how the rest of these go, folks. <laughs> Another one of the charms of New York, the homeless people. A lot of homeless people in New York. Not so much since the hurricane, but still. <laughs> still a lot. Listen, guys. No homeless people got hurt during the hurricane. They were the first ones out of there. They've got great instincts. Two days before the storms, one of their knees was wacky. You know, they're like, ah, oh, I think something's coming. The guy with the crazy eye was spinning like a compass at the equator. <laughs> Plus, they follow the rats, right? <laughs> if you're visiting New York and you're walking down Broadway and you see a pack of rats flying uptown, followed by a homeless mob, <laughs> follow the stink cloud, because there's a hellfire coming from the south. <laughs> oh, God. A lot of homeless people in New York. I don't mind the homeless people. It's the people that aren't homeless that come up to me and ask me for money. They get on my nerves. I'm on the train. This kid comes up to me. He's like 25, good shape. He's only a little dirty. And he goes, yo, can you help me out, bro? I said, that depends. You got a doctor's note? Is there a reason that you can't work or sell weed? No, get out of my face. But I'll help somebody out if they look like they really need the help. You know what I mean? I saw this guy, he looked rough, he was down on his luck. The only way to describe him to you guys is that he looked like a human capital R. I mean, like literally, he was bent over like this. Oh no, it was bad, he was just like, uh. He didn't even have to ask me for money. I just reached in my pocket and pulled out a five. I was like, buy some alcohol or something, all right, bro? <laughs> he looked so bad, I questioned my belief in God. I was like, why would you do this to this poor man? It made me think of that poem, Footprints. You know, there's two sets of footprints in the sand. Only he had one footprint and a long squiggly line as far as the eye could see. <laughs> uh, everybody's kids are getting bullied. It's an epidemic right now. We gotta save the kids from getting bullied. America's really turned into a country of weepy vaginas, folks. Can we stop picking on the kids? Can we stop picking on them? Bullying is an important part of the fabric that keeps America together. <laughs> One of the things that makes this country great, the army. Chocked filled with bullies, by the way. You take bullies out of the army, you know what you got? Sweden. Nobody gives a shit about Sweden at the UN. They're not like, nobody's asking, hey, Sweden, should we invade Iran? No, nobody gives a shit. NFL Sunday, filled with bullies. You take bullies out of football, you know what you got? Soccer. Is that what you want to become? A country full of soccer playing European pansies? We need bullies because bullies help shape the lives of nerds. And it's the nerds that enhance and enrich all of our lives. 
Look at Bill Gates. Look at Bill Gates. You think he would have invented Windows if he was running around at 13, smoking hash, finger banging hotties? I don't think so. A bully made sure he got off the bus, went straight home, finished all of his homework, skipped the dance. <laughs> Besides, you keep your kids from getting bullied, you are keeping them from one of the greatest joys of life. Watching that bully grow up to be a failure. <laughs> I had a kid who used to pick on me when I was young. His name was Shane Hughes. Shane tortured me. Last time I saw Shane was about six months ago. He was sleeping at a bus stop, <laughs> getting pissed on. <laughs> By me, I was pissing on Shane, guys. Do you see how the stories come full circle? <laughs> this could have been a tragedy. Oh, uh, went to a lot of weddings last year. Um, the biggest wedding of the year was the one I didn't get invited to. One of my best friends from the age of eight up through college got married, and his wife despises me because I made a couple of comments at another wedding. They were jokes, and she couldn't take the joke. And <laughs> even though I've apologized at length like 10 times, she just would not forgive me, so I didn't get invited. And uh, I know I'm up here talking fast and loose, but I got one of these folks. I got a heart, right? But I didn't get invited, so what can I do? What can I do except tell a true story about the bride that she'd probably want to take to the grave in front of comedy audiences in Canada and the United States? There were, there were two people that didn't get invited to this wedding. Me and the guy that the bride was blowing while the groom fucked her from behind. That's right. Two of my buddies ran a train on a chick and one of them decided to marry the middle car. You don't marry that girl. You don't marry that girl, are you fucking nuts? I love my fiance. First time she went down on me, I was like, oh, she's good at this. But then I had to stop thinking about how she got good at it, right? <laughs> my buddy doesn't have the benefit of the doubt. He's got the visual of his wife chowing down on his buddy's noodle, stained on the back of his eyelids. <laughs> and this hurt me for a long time, a couple of months, right? After the wedding, I was still feeling it. My girl comes up to me, she goes, John, you gotta be the bigger man here. I go, what are you talking about? She goes, you should invite them to our wedding. And I said, I can't. And she goes, why? I said, because I've been telling people at comedy shows for the last three months that she got pig roasted and then he stuck a ring on her hoof. <laughs> and then she goes, yeah, but nobody really goes to your shows. I doubt I'll get back to her. So, all right, all right. so I'm gonna invite them. And if she accepts and she decides she's gonna come, I'm gonna sit her right beside the guy she blew 10 years ago. <laughs> what do you know? The old game's back together again. Better yet, maybe your mother-in-law is watching tonight. My name's John Moses, thanks a lot. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Mike Yard is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Welcome back, folks. Yeah. Welcome back. Are you ready for your headline act, huh? Yeah. I couldn't think of a better way to close this show than have this guy. He's been on Bad Boys of Comedy on HBO. One of my favorites. A big hand for Mike Yard. Keep it going for Rich Voss. And Bonnie McFarland. What's up? How are we doing? Good? We good? Happy Valentine's Day, ladies. I say ladies because Valentine's Day don't got shit to do with men. That is not our holiday, is it, fellas? Just look at the commercials on TV. Every fucking thing is for women, right? Did he go to Jared? Fuck Jared, yo. If I ever meet Jared, I'm punching him in his throat. Fuck Jared. Every commercial is for women, right? Get her a diamond heart pendant from sales. You never see any commercials for men on Valentine's Day. Did she get a stripper? Nothing. What do we get on Valentine's Day? The same fucking vagina we had last Tuesday. That's all it is. You just dress it up. Ta-da! Be like, I just had that shit last week. You're re-gifting. <laughs> a fucking re-gifter. That's your problem. <laughs> oh, 
question is for y'all. I like how y'all got the game set up, ladies. Look, tonight the guys took their ladies out. When that bill come, every dude in here gonna reach in his pocket. <laughs> Not a woman in here gonna even look at the bill. They don't even know the bill is there when it's there, when it comes. Right, women don't even pay attention to that shit, right? The bill come, they start doing miscellaneous shit, like putting on their lip gloss and shit. <laughs> Thank you. And we be sitting there like, you fucking alcoholic, you just, you just drank all my lunch money for the week. It's kind of brilliant the way I got the game set up, ladies. Cause you think about it, women take no risk at the beginning of the relationship. All the risk is on men. Women, your risk come in when your heart gets involved. That's when you take a risk. But at the beginning, it's all on us. Think about it. We got to pay every time we go, right? First eight, nine hundred dates is on us. <laughs> you got to pay every single time, right? They only pay on our birthday, and that's when they get loud in the restaurant. I got it! <laughs> Excuse me, his money is no good here! <laughs> and we'd be like, thanks for that fucking slice of pizza. I don't took you to... Right, we gotta pay every time, we gotta ask you out, that's our job too, women don't ask men out. No, hell no, you can't deal with that, the possibility of a brother telling you no. Your vagina ego can't handle that. <laughs> Could you imagine that, ladies, if you had a bar or a club and you see a dude and you think he's cute and you're like, you know, I'm gonna ask that dude out. And you walk over to that guy, you took everything in you to walk over to that guy and you're like, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You know, I was just uh, sitting on the other side of the club and I was, seemed like a nice dude. And I was just wondering, you know, maybe I could take you out to dinner or something. Maybe a movie, maybe some ice cream, whatever you like. Could you imagine, ladies, if that dude looked you dead in your eyes and he was like, if you don't get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> you would lose your mind. <laughs> you would kill yourself. That's what we go through every day, okay? When you a single dude, your self-esteem gotta be high as shit because no follows you everywhere you go, okay? When you a single dude, no is your constant companion. Just, just try to meet somebody. Hey, girl, no, all right. <laughs> What's up, girl? No, okay, why? Why are you yelling, though? There's no reason to yell. <laughs> just say no, I'm right here. You know how hard that is, ladies? You know how hard it is for a brother just to walk across that floor at a club and ask you to dance? Woo! You know, because yeah. we, we got to build ourselves up, right? Because we usually trying to come back off of a previous no. <laughs> so we be trying to build ourselves up. We be on the other side of the club like, fuck it, I'm going to ask her. Fuck it, I'm going. <laughs> That's what we say when we get to that point. Fuck it. <laughs> and then we look at our boys. We be like, yo, you think I should go? And our boys be like, yeah. Because they know what's going to happen. And dudes are evil, too. They'll gas it up like, yo, she been checking you out the whole fucking night. I don't know what you waited for. <laughs> then we build ourselves up and we walk over there. We usually got to go through the crowd. Excuse me, pardon me. Excuse me, I'm trying to. So everybody see you going over there, right? And we usually dance when we ask you, what's up, girl? And women are cold-blooded, baby. They will make eye contact. Absolutely not. <laughs> but you can't stop dancing because you're already committed. <laughs> now you just feel like an asshole. <laughs> and here's why it's messed up when you're a dude, right? There's no support group. Okay, you think them same friends that told me all that bullshit to, tell me, to help me go over there? You think they're waiting on the other side of the club with a drink and a hug? No. No, they over there laughing their ass off. Because that's what we do to them. That's what men do to each other. You see your boy get shot down, you be like, oh, 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 shit. Right? And you bring people into it. He don't even know. Look, 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 That's how we do each other. Guys don't care about each other. Every woman in here got a support group. I like that about y'all. I believe women, that's one thing I envy about women. I think your friendships are so much better than male friendships. Because when women are friends, they really know each other, right? 
You do, because because you know everything about your girlfriend, because every little thing that happens, you call her up. Girl, let me tell you what happened. She's like, it's a Magada! <laughs> and they talk for three days about nothing, right? <laughs> it could be simple shit. You bought red shoes, you whore. I can't believe you! <laughs> Fellas, keep it real. Our friendships are shallow. We don't really know each other. We think we do, but we don't. Like, I got dudes that I've been friends with for over 20 years. I kid you not, grew up with these dudes. And I don't even know their real name. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> not until the cops come with a picture. <laughs> like, have you seen Derek Johnson? I'm like, I don't know who the fuck Derek Johnson is. But that looked just like Boobop. <laughs> All right, you guys been good. My name is Mike Yard. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. STV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Wow. Welcome back to Gotham Comedy Live. That's all the, the, we did good. We don't, we've never performed together. Uh, On stage or in the bedroom. Uh. <laughs> no, I do, I perform in the bedroom, Mike, because I have to pretend I'm somewhere else. Uh. All right, let's have a big hand for all the comics tonight, folks. Come on up. Harrison Greenbaum. Harrison, go. Joe Matarin, Mike. John Moses, and Mike. Bonnie Mike. McFarlane. I'm Rick Foss, still empty inside on iTunes. 